Now your theorem one says f is continuous, g is continuous. Now if f is continuous and g is continuous, then the sum of the two functions is also going to be continuous. The difference is going to be continuous. Product is continuous, division is continuous. But division is continuous under under one condition. In a condition, the denominator should not be a zero. Okay, now we are not defined cases. Now, pack up or you have to know that one by zero is equal to infinity. But that is why we use pack up. You have to know that the denominator should never be zero. So let it be not defined. I know. If for example, sixteen liner, you have to prove that a rational function, rational line, it will have a numerator and a denominator. Where your denominator is not equal to zero, you have to prove that a rational function is continuous. If a numerator line, okay, p of x, so p of x is going to be a polynomial. If for example, fourteen line, I know. Example fourteen, we saw that a polynomial function is continuous. If a p of x is also a polynomial, and q of x is also a polynomial. So when you have two continuous functions in the numerator and the denominator, that is division, I know. P is continuous, Q is continuous. So P by Q is also continuous, provided the denominator is not zero. All right. So the rational function is also continuous. Rational functions are continuous. If you look at the proof, it is pretty simple. Okay. Right. Example seventeen. F of x is equal to sine x. इप्पे इधर वन्दे continuous है इलियन prove करनो. So what is your first step? F of c. So you will have sine c. So this is my f of c. कंडो पुच्छा है. So इप्पे limit limit x tends to c of f of x is going to be limit x tends to c of sine x. But you have to remember that whenever we are dealing with trigonometric functions, इप्पे वन्दे limit x tends to zero. Of sine x divided by x in one day, what will what will you have? Zero by zero, which is not defined. You learned this in your limits and derivatives chapter. Uh, I don't remember the chapter, but class eleven, correct? Ah, so this is our part. So it is not defined. Abhi na. If in our sine, cos, in our functions, la varam hoye. It is always better to approach them in this way. So you can take x to be x plus h. Abo if x tends to zero, h also tends to zero. Correct? Ah, this is true. You agree? So in the many cases, like it is always better to take a small function in order to avoid this not defined cases. So if in that, then I am going to do. Instead of directly taking the sine x, I am going to replace x is equal to c plus h. Condition I am going to x tends to c. I am going to. So what will h tend to? H is nothing but x. Minus c. So h will tend to c minus c, which is zero. So the limit will be zero. Limit x in in that way. I am going to change my variable now. H tends to zero. This we learnt in derivatives. Correct. The first principle. La pato. You have to please watch my videos. I have given the link in my description. Limits and derivatives. La derivatives paarenga. First principle. Please watch that. You will know why I am doing this. So limit h tends to zero. What will happen to my function now? Sine of wherever I have a x, it will be replaced with c. Plus h, it is always better to do this. Okay, but denominator la suppose x in that one, it will become c plus h, and now in that one h is zero substitute. Pana I'll have sine c by sine c, and limit h tends to zero. That one even when I substitute, I know one thing. So limit x tends to zero of sine x by x is equal to one. In the identity, I use pani kla. Correcta? Now what happens here? My question is sine x. Apo sine of c plus h in that one. Ipa in that one formula, trigonometric formula, I'll have H tends to zero of sine of a plus b sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. So I'll have sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. Now when I substitute the value of h to be zero, I'll have sine c times cos zero plus cos c times sine zero. Sine zero zero, and then this term will become a zero. Cos zero is one. I'll be left with sine c. So what do I see? Limit X tends to c of f of x is equal to f of c, which is equal to sine c. इधर direct आवे prove पने इतना निगर keeping है, but in this question it is pretty simple. But when you are dealing with very complicated questions, you have to know this particular method. अन्ना लेकिन the method ये इप्पे वे सोली तेरा. So always whenever you have sine, cos, tan, इन दमारी अन्ना रहना लेवे, please follow this method. Okay? इप्पे moving on to example eighteen, you have tan x. इप्पे tan x एवरी अदर लाम. F of x is equal to sine x. Divided by cos x. We just proved that 
sin x is a continuous function. Similarly, you can prove that cos x is also a continuous function. Every prove on the f of c is equal to cos c. Ademari limit h tends to 0 of cos of c plus h. If we substitute it, cos of a plus b in the cos a cos b minus sin a sin b. Correct? So I'll have cos a cos b minus sin a sin b. B, I'm just applying the same method, okay? If I have 0, I'll have cos c times cos 0 minus sin c times sin 0. If I have the term, I'll have cos c. So, I also see that cos c is also a continuous function. If a numerator is a continuous function, denominator is a continuous function. So, the division of that is also going to be continuous. So, f of x is continuous. As sin and cos are continuous functions, which is proved in the previous question. Continuous functions. Okay, you prove on your In example 17, you have proved that sin is a continuous function. Here you have proved that cos is a continuous function. So the theorem one and so the division of two continuous functions are going to be continuous. But in the denominator should not be equal to zero. Correct? Cos x should not be equal to 0. So, what is the condition for x? x should not be equal to 2n plus 1 times 5 by 2. Correct? Whenever you substitute the value of n, if n is 0, I will have 5 by 2. Cos 5 by 2 is 0. So, that should not be there. If n is 1, I will have 2 plus 1, 3 pi by 2. Cos 3 pi by 2 is again 0. So, I should not have that. So, cos x should not be equal to 0. Na. x should not be equal to this particular thing. Okay? Always remember, denominator should not be equal to 0. Moving on to theorem 2, you have g is continuous at c. So, g is a function which is continuous at c in Kurtukanga. H is continuous at g of c. If in that, this it will be very very clear when you are solving example questions. So, you have to understand that if g is continuous at c and h is continuous at g of c, then the given function g of h is continuous at c. Okay, it is the g of h. This is the representation. You put a hollow circle. If example na sold, right, you will understand this theorem better. So, you have f of x. I have two different functions here. I have x square, which is one function. And I have sin x, which is another function. Now, what am I going to do? I will take g of x to be sin x and h of x to be x square. Right? I have g of x to be sin x and h of x to be x square. If when I do g of h of x, what happens? It becomes sin of x square. G on the sin x square. When I have h also, I can write this as sin of x square. What do you know? G of x is equal to sin x is continuous. We proved that in example 17. And h of x is continuous. We also proved that in example 13. x square on the continuous. We proved that this is example 17. And this is example 13. Please, please go back and watch the previous video. So, we have two different functions. This is a combination of two different functions. Correct? So, g of h of x is going to be sin of x square. In that x badala, if I substitute x square, it is going to be sin x. Instead of x, I can substitute h of x. This is nothing but g of h of x. So, this we are writing it as g of h of x. So, in the end to make continuous. So, the combination of that g of h of x is also continuous. G of h of x is also continuous. Instead of x, I am going to put x square. Instead of x, I am going to put x square, which is h of x. So, g of h of x is sin x square. So, this is the example 20. So, what have we learned? How am I going to split? But g of x is going to be mod x. And h of x is also going to be some mod x. Okay? If I substitute mod a, I know that this particular function is mod x. So, I will have f of x is a combination of in that type of mod. Correct? I see a whole mod. So, that is going to be my g of x. So, when I have g of 1 minus x plus mod x. So, when I have g of 1 minus x plus h of x. So, this is going to be mod of 1 minus x plus mod x. Correct? But g of x is my mod x. When I substitute 1 minus x plus h of x, it becomes 1 minus x plus mod x inside a modulus symbol. If a g of x is continuous, we proved in example 3 and h of x is also a similar mod x function. So, I have g of x is continuous, 
h of x is continuous so g of h of x is also continuous purinjada so instead of mod x instead of this x i am substituting this whole function where i know one is continuous i know x is also continuous h of x and mod x so mod x is also continuous so a function of a function which are both continuous will give me a continuous function the combination of that is also going to give me a continuous function okay it is pretty easy you solve more exercise questions you will understand it better exercise la indha mari nariya questions irukke so i will solve that after this okay please copy so with this we are done with examples let's move on to some exercise questions <laughs>